It's me, Duty Boy! Welcome back to my Minecraft Ocean Tutorial series. I've covered tridents and ocean monuments and guardian farms. Now that we have all the prismarine we want, we need lots of squid ink to make dark prismarine blocks. So today I'll be building and comparing three squid ink farms in Minecraft Java Edition 1.17. I'll include links down in the description to all the videos that showcase these farms I'm building. The first squid ink farm I'm building uses the new Axital mob in 1.17. Pardon me, I meant to say the Axolol. Axolalitol? Axolotl. Okay, this thing. You can find these in caves and small dark spaces below Y63. I'm gonna grab two of these in buckets and breed them using buckets of tropical fish. Okay, I lied. I actually grabbed about 10 of these in buckets. These cute little creatures hate squids and will kill them, so the first squid farm I'm going to build and test is an axolotl-based farm inspired by Ray's Works. The best place for this farm is in a river biome where squids are twice as likely to spawn. However, the best river location for a squid farm is one with a wide space without a lot of water. The easiest place to find such a specific river location is near the outskirts of a desert or savanna. So let's go find a dry river. Unfortunately, I've been playing in this world since October 2020 and I've yet to find a desert or savanna biome. Part of the reason is that I haven't explored much. I didn't want to because I wanted to wait for 1.17 to arrive in the hopes I could spawn new resources closer to my base at the spawn chunks. Here's a desert. This isn't too close to my base, but it's about as far away as the guardian farm in a different direction. Now we're looking along the outskirts for a very dry riverbed. Here's one. This looks perfect. Here are the materials I'm going to use to build this first squid farm. So first I'm going to take all the water out of this area using sponges. Now I'm going to mark dimensions nine wide and 24 blocks long, making sure that a majority of it is within the river biome. Looks like this will be the best orientation for this farm in this area. All I have to do is clear out the blocks down to Y level 63. Up against this wall, I'm placing water buckets to create a stream from one side to the other. Now I'm going to dig down to Y58 and let the water flow down. Now that I've got a water tank dug out, I need all these blocks to be water source blocks. So I'm going to bail water sources to two sides and then the entire level should become source blocks. And I'll do that level by level all the way up. Now on the side where the streams end, I'm going to place a line of wall blocks just beyond the streams. I'm going to dig out one space under these walls, find the center, and place two hoppers going off the side. Then I'm going to place two chests to collect the drops. I can expand this later if needed. Now I'm going to place 20 more hoppers all pointing into those hoppers. Now let's test items flowing into the hoppers. Looking good. Now let's release our axolotls into the tank and breed them using buckets of tropical fish. Now I'm going to name tag each of these, which places them in a separate mob cap. The bottom of the tank is at Y58, so I'm going to scaffold up 128 blocks from here. I'm at Y186, and I'm going to check my spawn area using the Spawning Spheres data pack you can get at VanillaTweaks.net. This creates a sphere diagram around the player's AFK spot, and then we can go down and see what else might hurt spawn rates down here. Ooh, there's a new geode! In a dungeon, we need to light that up, but not much else, pretty cool. Now I'm gonna return up the scaffold to the top and AFK there for 15 minutes. I'm observing the axolotl tank with my second account while I AFK above and it appears not to be going very well. The squids are spawning in an idle, inactive state. Probably due to my distance from the tank and because they're not active, the axolotls aren't killing them. If you build this farm, I recommend moving your AFK spot down 10 blocks below where I built mine to Y175 or so, as that should cause all the squids in the tank to spawn active and get killed right away. Nice side effect of 1.17, glow squids spawn at night, allowing you to get ink sacs from this farm as well. Okay, I have AFK'd here for 15 minutes and now it's night, which means that the area below is full of mobs. Just occurred to me that I should probably light up the surface area surrounding the tank, but let's see what we got anyway. I've killed all the mobs and slept, and now to see what we got. Pretty decent, given I didn't optimize this farm nearly enough. Not counting the salmon, the total ink sacks is 190 in 15 minutes, plus 21 glow ink sacks. Which means we'd get 760 ink sacks and 84 glow ink sacks per hour. That's good, but not nearly as good as the other farms I'm going to build today. The next squid farm is the classic Il Mango squid farm. I'm going to tear down this farm and build Il Mango's farm from Y62 down to Y45 and then drop the squids down to Y30. 
Here are the materials I will use to build this farm. I believe this corner is the best place to put it as all the water and running water blocks will be within the river biome. I've set up wool blocks to show where the top of the farm will be. Now we have to dig a hole from here down to Y30. This is one of the drawbacks to this farm, but I'm going to make it easier by setting up a beacon. The beacon has to be set up at Y30 so we can use haste in the whole area. So around the center, I dig down to Y30, dig out a little cave and set up the beacon there. Now I replace all the white wool with glass, leaving the light blue wool to remind me where to pour buckets of water later. With the beacon active, I'm going to dig down to the depth where the flowing water should stop. Now that I've dug down to Y44, I'm going to set up the fence gates I need here to stop the water from running down from above. I'm placing wool here where I place the spaces above, which makes it easier to place the fence gates. After placing fence gates on all sides and under the wool blocks, I open them all so the squid can fall through them. Now I can return to the top and place the water source blocks in the spaces I left. I should note there's also four blocks of glass all around the water blocks. Now I finish digging down to Y30 and tear down my beacon. I just want to run a test with this, so I'm going to place a chest at one side and two lines of hoppers going into them. I've extended these hoppers just one space past the last water blocks above. Now I'm going to connect more lines of hoppers going into those hoppers and cover them with slabs. If I wanted this farm to be cheaper or more permanent, I'd use a hopper minecart and rails with a cart unloader to save on iron. I'm going to scaffold up from the center of the farm so that I'm standing at Y157. This will be my AFK spot. But first, I'm going to check my spawning sphere again using the data pack. This time, because I'm AFKing much lower, I have to get into more of these caves around the area and spawn proof more of them with torches and other methods. So the digging and the spawn proofing are two big drawbacks to this farm. Now I'm going to AFK at this farm and see what we get. Two thousand two hundred and eight squidding per hour. The rates are much better, but with either of the farms I've built so far, we have to travel a long way from the spawn point, even through the nether. I'm more interested in building a squid farm in the ocean near my guardian farm for easier block crafting. You may be thinking, how is squid farming possible in the ocean? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you a very impressive squid ink farm for an ocean biome. This farm can also collect lots of kelp if you like, and it is also based on a design by Ray's Works. This farm requires us to find another ocean monument, one that hasn't already been converted into a guardian farm. Luck has it, there's another ocean monument I found just a few hundred blocks east of my guardian farm that I can use. This nearby island provides a perfect place to set up camp. Making sure that I have a conduit, TNT, redstone blocks, two stacks of dirt blocks, and a stack of prismarine in my inventory. I also have all the building materials for the farm in this shulker box. I'm going to remove all my armor and take an invisibility potion, a potion of water breathing, and a potion of night vision. First I'm going to swim under the ocean monument with a conduit and a stack of prismarine blocks. Down here I'm going to press F3 and G to show the chunk borders and find the four chunks that meet right in the middle. The underside of the monument is blocked by stone rocks so I'm going to get as close as I can to the center. Just off these chunk borders, I'm going to set up a conduit using the underside of the monument as the top of the frame. With that, I'm ready to break into the top and front corners of the monument using TNT, dirt blocks, and redstone blocks and kill the Elder Guardians. Then we can avoid mining fatigue for the rest of the build. Here are the materials I use to build this farm. At this top ring of the monument, press F3 plus G to show the chunk borders again. Notice that the chunk borders meet right in the middle of this central ring on top of the monument. All ocean monuments are aligned to the chunk borders this way and we'll use them to build this farm. From here, we're going out to the right three chunks. Just outside this third chunk border, I'm going to swim down to the bottom and look for a piece of kelp growing just outside the third chunk border. If there isn't one, I'm going to take some kelp from nearby and plant it here, then raise it all the way up to the surface. Right next to this kelp, I'm going to place a prismarine brick stair, then take out the kelp and place one next to it. These two stairs mark the center of a long wall we're going to build here. I'm going to place 10 prismarine bricks out to the side of each of these stairs, then a temporary block, and in front of that, 10 more blocks out to the side. At the end, I'll place two blocks in front. I'm going to replace some of the blocks with sea lanterns. 
Otherwise, creepers might spawn on these walls and that could prove catastrophic. From the center, I'm going to replace the fourth block out, the block at the corner, and then the fifth block from this corner. Now I'm going to build a line to mirror this one on the other side of the stairs. Under these stairs, I'm going to place a double chest and then two more double chests under that. On the other side, place one hopper going into each of these chests. Now I'm running a line of hoppers into the center hoppers going out along the wall until I reach the end. Here I'll place one more hopper outside, a hopper going into that, and then more hoppers going into that hopper until I reach the corner. And then we can do the same on the other side. Place dirt blocks on top of all the hoppers. Then place another line of dirt blocks in front of those. Place a prismarine block under this dirt block at the corner, then three more under it. Continue this wall of prismarine all the way across with the middle section inset as shown. At these little inset corners, place a trapdoor up against the side of the dirt, like so. Now remove all the dirt blocks, starting with the inner ones and then the outer ones, so that the water flows into the hoppers. Do yourself a favor and don't play with these trapdoors, otherwise you'll have to do the dirt again. To build the flying machine return station, carefully hold shift and click to place a prismarine block on top of the trapdoor. Place three more blocks on top of that, in front of it, and on the inside. Then get rid of the block touching the trapdoor. Place a regular piston on the side of the inside block facing forward and place a repeater on the block next to it facing the piston. Set it to the maximum tick delay. Finally, place a piece of redstone dust on this forward block. Now build the same contraption on the other side but in reverse with the piston still on the inside. This is what you should have at this point. Now for the flying machines. Place an observer beside the block with the repeater facing the piston and place another in front of the front block facing outward. Place slime blocks in the water under each of these observers, then two sticky pistons facing into the slime blocks. The forward sticky piston should face the rear and the rear sticky piston should face the front. From each of the slime blocks, extend a line of eight more slime blocks out in each direction and place a prismarine brick at the end. You are now going to build another flying machine in the reverse on the other side. Now return to the center, turn your chunk border grid back on and move three chunks to the left side of the monument. Same here, raise kelp from the bottom to the surface so that you can place a prismarine brick stair next to it, then break the kelp and place another stair on the other side of the chunk border. On this side, we need to create an item catching wall that is the opposite shape. So, from the center stairs, you're going to go out only eight blocks, then place a temporary dirt block, another brick behind that, then get rid of the dirt block, and then go out 12 more blocks. At the end, go forward two blocks. Like before, I'm going to replace three blocks with sea lanterns to prevent spawns. Then mirror the same on the other side of the stairs. Place three double chests under the stairs with three hoppers going into them. Then run hoppers out to the first corner, place another hopper behind going into this last one, then another hopper on the outside of that one and run the line all the way to the end. Do the same on the other side. Cover all of the visible hoppers with dirt blocks. Then run another line of dirt blocks in front of those. Below this front dirt block on the end, place a prismarine block and three more below it. Then run this wall all the way across with a forward section across the middle. Place trapdoors up against this little corner in the dirt and then take out all the dirt blocks. Like on the other side, you're going to build your flying machine return mechanism, but facing the opposite direction, outside rather than in. Shift click to place a block on the trapdoor, then more on top, in front, and outside of it. Then break the block on the trapdoor. Place a regular piston facing forward on the outside, then place a repeater on this block pointing into the piston on full delay. Place a piece of redstone dust on the forward block and you're all done. Now build another return station going the opposite way on the other side. To build the AFK platform, return to the center, place a dirt block on the inside of the central ring, and then place 124 scaffolding on top of it and climb to the top. You should be at Y185, unless your ocean monument was at a different level for some reason. Build a glass platform here and build a little roof of slabs to avoid damage from phantoms. 
Finally, I'm going to tear down the blocks on top of the monument so they don't get in the way of the flying machines. I will also fill any holes I blasted in the top surface of the monument and cover it with kelp so that it grows up into the flying machine's path. Time also to trim any kelp on top of the monument that isn't grown to the surface. We're all done! Now to turn on the flying machines at the same time, I'm going to run a line of temporary dirt blocks between these two pistons and place redstone dust coming in from both sides, eight on one side and seven on the other. Then just place a block of redstone in the middle to launch and tear down the dirt blocks. Now I'm gonna fly up to the AFK platform and stand there for 15 minutes to see how it compares to the other two farms. All right, in 15 minutes, we got 463 ink and 120 kelp. This means in one hour, this farm would output 1,852 ink and 480 kelp. But we can increase the kelp output by planting and trimming more kelp on top of the monument. So, although Will Mango Squid Ink Farm won for highest output, Ray's farm also provides tons of kelp, provided you're good about planting and growing kelp stalks on the ocean monument surface. It's two farms in one, it's closer to my guardian farm, and that suits my personal needs quite nicely. One thing to note is that it's very easy to break the flying machines by saving and reloading your game in this area. Even moving partly outside the chunks can throw off the timing of the two machines and break them. To avoid this, place levers on the back of the two pistons on one side of the area and flip them on. When the flying machine arrives here, the piston will be already extended and won't send the machine back. To start it again, just flip the levers. The flying machines don't have to fly in sync to collect the items. Turning off the farm lets you avoid breaking it when you leave the area. That's it for this tutorial, and I just quickly want to say how grateful I am for all the support on my Ocean Tutorial series. It's been amazing, and I appreciate all your views and comments and likes. Please click the like button!